Welcome back to Great SpaceX. We're here to keep you up to date on the most exciting news about SpaceX. In today's episode, we'll be looking at the testing of the Raptor engine on the recent Ship 20 and the development progress of the Orbital Tank Farm. There's also interesting information about the environmental assessment progress at SpaceX where recently the FAA hosted a virtual public hearing regarding it. Along with that, NASA predicts the first orbital starship launch date and time. But first, if you're new to our channel, a sincere welcome from the great SpaceX team. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you won't miss any of SpaceX's latest news on our channel. Alrighty then, let's stop all the dilly-dallying and get a move on with today's episode of Great SpaceX. Let's start at Starbase. After months of expectation, anticipation, See what I did there? SpaceX has conducted the first engine testing of its Raptor engines. Everything went perfectly. However, it's sad that SpaceX only tested the RVAC-5 pre-burner this time, and the TPS tiles were missing after the test. Nonetheless, congratulations to the SpaceX team. It's brightening the exciting steps along our pathway to the moon, Mars, and beyond, and we're hoping for a static fire tomorrow. Once again, the window runs from 5 p.m. until midnight. Also, at the orbital launch site on Monday, SpaceX rolled the first of the last two remaining cryo shells from their build site to the orbital tank farm. Hours later, SpaceX attached a crane, lifted the sixth cryo shell, and sleeved GSE tank number eight, the second of two methane tanks. With that installation out of the way, there's now a good chance that Starship's first orbital tank farm will be structurally complete by the end of the month. With a vast majority of plumbing already in place and the process of filling the spaces between cryo shells and GSE tanks with insulating foam already underway, it's possible the farm will be ready to support some level of super heavy wet dress rehearsal and static fire testing sometime next month. In the meantime, there remains the mystery of a pair of massive horizontal liquid methane tanks, the first of which was installed at the Orbital Tank Farm on Sunday, October 17th, likely capable of holding about as much fuel as each of SpaceX's two custom-built liquid methane storage tanks. It's unclear why the company appears to be effectively doubling the orbital pad's liquid methane storage capacity with the addition of two new tanks purchased off the shelf. What do you think about these tanks? Let me know in the comments down below. The next thing I want to talk about is the FAA hosting the virtual public hearing regarding SpaceX's environmental assessment. The Federal Aviation Administration is holding a virtual public hearing on the Draft Programmatic Environmental Assessment, or PEA, Monday, October 18th, 2021, at 5 p.m. The hearing was held to collect comments on a draft of the FAA's environmental assessment for the program which is required under the National Environmental Policy Act before the agency can grant SpaceX a launch license for the first orbital flight of Starship. Members of the public registered to comment on the SpaceX draft PEA will have the opportunity to speak at a public hearing hosted by the FAA. A majority of the public comments given during an online hearing held on Zoom by the Federal Aviation Administration were in support of the development of Elon Musk's next-generation space vehicle, Starship. Many spoke not just of admiration for SpaceX, Musk and their rockets, but also pointed to the benefits of decades of space exploration up to the present day, including new technologies like GPS and satellite connectivity. Though many positive comments appeared to originate from outside of Texas, a smaller number of people also voiced concerns about impacts on local ecosystems and species near Boca Chica. The FAA will continue to collect public comments in another Zoom session on Wednesday, as well as in writing through the end of the month. After evaluating and responding to the comments, the FAA will then decide whether SpaceX is allowed to move ahead with no or only minor adjustments, or if a more intensive environmental impact statement will have to be drafted. And for our last bit of news, I want to tell you about NASA's document revealing SpaceX's first orbital Starship launch plan. 
What a discovery! A NASA document discussing a group's plan to document SpaceX's first orbital velocity Starship re-entry appears to suggest that the next generation rocket's orbital launch debut has slipped several months into 2022. In March of 2021, CEO Elon Musk confirmed a report that SpaceX was working towards a target of July 2021 for Starship's first orbital launch attempt. At the time, it seemed undeniably ambitious, but far from impossible. Just three months after SN15's successful landing, SpaceX rolled the first orbital class Starship and Super Heavy to the orbital launch site and briefly stacked the pair, Ship 20 and Booster 4, to their full height forming the tallest rocket ever assembled. Although largely a photo op, SpaceX still installed a full 29 Raptors on Super Heavy B4 and 6 Raptors on Starship S20, further raising confidence that the company's engine production was already up to the task of supplying the nearly three dozen needed for a single orbital test flight. However, up to now, it has been almost two months that Ship 20 and Booster 4 have been sitting on the standing pad, by far the longest any Starship prototype has waited. Combined with recent developments in the FAA's Boca Chica environmental review process, the odds of SpaceX attempting the first orbital Starship launch by the end of 2021 have rapidly dropped from decent to nearly zero. From a technical perspective, it seems likely that SpaceX could still be ready for an orbital launch attempt just a few months from now. <laughs> well then again, if in a few months it'll be 2022 anyway, right? From a regulatory perspective though, it would be practically unprecedented for the FAA to complete a favorable environmental review and approve even a one-off orbital Starship launch license in approximately 10 weeks. Even the apparent March 2022 target revealed in a NASA poster focused on the agency's plans to film an orbital Starship re-entry via high-altitude jet assumes that the FAA's review and licensing process will take around seven months from August 2021. Still extremely optimistic. Ultimately, after two months with next to no prototype testing, it's beginning to look like SpaceX has decided to focus on finishing Starbase's first orbital launch site, refining vehicle designs, and building new prototypes, B5, S21, S22, rather than pushing hard for rapid B4 S20 testing and an imminent launch attempt. As a result, it's becoming increasingly unlikely that B4 and Ship 20 will fly as new, and improved prototypes like B5 and S21 prepare to overtake them. Do you believe that S20 and B4 will remain slotted as SpaceX's first orbital launch vehicle, or will that title go to S21 and B5? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And that's all the information we have for you today. If you like what my team and I are doing and would like to help assist us with a little nudge or, you know, uh, if you want to buy us a round of coffee all around the office, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Everyone's support will be the motivation for us to create more quality content. Otherwise, thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to hit the bell so you'll never miss out on future episodes of Great SpaceX. And remember, be sure to leave a comment about your thoughts and because you know we always get a kick out of reading them we we are always curious about what you're thinking about you know that's why we always ask questions right anyway as always this is kevin and my team and i will see you next time